'twas a dark and lonely rolling ramble. And how suitable this is for the theme of today's discussion. I'm actually going to be doing a pretty big one on intellectual property. More specifically how now I pretty much think it shouldn't exist. See, there's something that a lot of people don't understand about copyright and patent and trademark law. First of all, these are three different things. Copyright protects works that are, quote, fixed in a tangible medium. The key being that it has to be a work, like it has to be a specific work, not just, you know, a few words on paper. You have to have created a work of significant size uh, that has significant literary, artistic merit, whatever. And then on top of that, um, it has to be actually put down. You can't protect something in your head. You have to actually publish it somehow, somewhere. Copyright protects unpublished works, but it has to be written down. It has to be created somewhere. Copyright doesn't protect an idea you have or something that's written down in your brain, but just not put on paper or not written down in code. Copyright protects these various works. Patents do not. Patents are a very different beast. Patents are supposed to cover inventions. Inventions are not necessarily fixed in a tangible medium. Patents deal more with um, claims. Specifically, patents are a, uh, they're generally composed of a series of diagrams and descriptions that detail a specific, useful, um, unique invention. Uh, the uniqueness is important. You can't patent a simple rectangle. For some weird reason, they'll let you patent a rounded rectangle used as a cell phone screen, even though that's not really an invention, that, that's just a shape. But uh, I digress. This is not a discussion of the problems with the patent system in that capacity. And then trademarks are kind of a, they're kind of a fringe version or, or section of intellectual property law that most people don't understand. Trademarks are where you have a business in a certain category, and the trademark is logos, names, etc., that specifically um, basically form the identity of your business or product, and trademarks exist primarily to avoid confusion, customer confusion about whether or not something is yours or not. If I was to make a beverage and call it Coca-Cola or Coke, that might be a problem. Someone else who makes beverages is called Coca-Cola. Now, is my beverage the real Coca-Cola or some other beverage that just also happens to be called Coca-Cola? This is the fundamental uh, basis of trademark law. It protects your branding. It protects your name and your business category that is a well-known established name from being used by other people in a way that would cause customers, potential customers, whatever, to be confused. And in fact, that, that is specifically where patent infringement lies. It, it only lies with confusion. If I made a computer company called Coke, well, that's a computer company called Coke. Coca-Cola doesn't make computers. There's no such thing today as a computer branded Coke. Now, because Coca-Cola or Coke are, that's such a well-known brand, it's possible if I were to use the same design language as the beverage Coca-Cola that, uh, and call it Coke, well, perhaps they would think that um, what I'm selling is actually a product of Coca-Cola. Um, that, oh, they've gotten into computers now? I had no idea. So, to some extent, it may protect these sort of other uses as well. You don't want people thinking that Coca-Cola makes computers, then dragging Coca-Cola through the mud for their crappy computers called Coke or whatever, uh, when it's really uh, Jody, the weird, drivey-talky guy, making computers called Coke, probably doing Coke, even though he doesn't. Uh, you get the idea. So, in summary, 
copyright protects works written, coded, basically artistic works. Trademark protects inventions, specific, detailed inventions. Trademark protects, uh, sorry, someone flashed me there. Um, trademark protects actual branding or company names, basically identity. And these are all three different types of intellectual property law. Now, the reason that these exist, well, trademark is a little different, but the reason that copyright and patents exist, at least, is so that if you create something, you have an opportunity to make some money from what you've made before everybody can have it and do whatever they want with it. Being able to make whatever you, or make money off of whatever you've made for, and, and be the only person allowed to distribute copies of it for a fixed period of time, that is copyright. It is not a natural right. It is a government-granted limited monopoly for the thing you made. In a certain amount of time, you need to make, you know, make your money or whatever, um, get the benefits out of what you made, and then after that certain amount of time, whatever you made becomes the property of the public. It falls into the public domain. A lot of things are in the public domain, including the original Mickey Mouse designs for uh, Steamboat Willie. Of course, that is, uh, that is like 100 years old, so it's not very useful. It's not the modern Mickey Mouse that we all know. It's the ancient Mickey Mouse that started it all, and that isn't really seeding much ground. <clears throat> so Disney does not really care that Mickey Mouse is in the public domain because it's not the Mickey Mouse you know, it's the Mickey Mouse that started everything. Anyway, that's just a fun little digression. Oh, by the way, while I'm here, just so you know, the Happy Birthday song, it used to be copyrighted, and people were claiming that they had the rights to it and so on. Someone challenged it at some point, somewhat recently, several years ago. It's 2024 as I filmed this. Uh, the Happy Birthday copyright holders were found to not actually have a, a, a valid copyright anymore. It had expired long ago. So you can sing Happy Birthday if you've ever wondered why it is that restaurants will come out and sing some sort of little Happy Birthday song they came up with that's not the classic Happy Birthday to you. It's because of that, because Happy Birthday was copyrighted. This is one of the oldest songs that almost any of us know. One of the most common songs almost every single one of us in the United States at least knows is Happy Birthday. And it was copyrighted out of your culture. And the only thing that got rid of it was a court challenge saying, hey, they don't have a valid copyright to this anymore. And uh, yeah, pfft, then it was gone. I want to make the case that intellectual property possibly should be completely eliminated, but I don't fully think that yet. Um, I'm going to make the case, and I want you to think about it and let me know what you think. First, I want to make the fundamentals clear. Copyright as it stands now, and I don't remember the current exact numbers, but copyright is something to the tune of um, the term is all the way up to the death of the author, plus I think it was 70 years and then extended to 95 but um, I don't remember that detail. I know it was death of the author plus 70 at, a, at least, and I thought they extended it again. Um, I, I need to go brush up on that, but it doesn't matter. The bottom line is, if you make something in your 20s and you die at 80, you've locked it up for 60 years, and then it's locked up for at least another 70 years from the public benefiting from it, that's 130 years. That is so much time that at that point, falling into the public domain is almost meaningless because no one cares about it anymore. Um, or, or at least most people don't care about it anymore. But that's just for copyright. That's just for artistic works or literary works. Patents don't have that. They have a limited term that maxes out at 20 years. There, there's various steps of uh, renewal, but in the end, patents are limited to an absolute maximum of 20 years. A few things that were patent encumbered that ended up not being patent encumbered um, that caused a lot of problems, especially in the tech world, 
Um, the, the graphics interchange format, which is properly pronounced GIF, but idiots, including the original creator, said it was pronounced GIF. It's not graphics interchange format. Use the LZW, or Lempel Ziv Welch, compression algorithm, which was patented and was patent and covered for two decades, which means that it wasn't that long ago that the GIF image format's compression was not encumbered by a patent, which means to be able to encode or decode GIF images, technically, for 20 years there, you know, this image that was very common on the internet, especially in the early days, you would have to pay the people who came up with the compression a royalty, or a uh, license fee, rather, to license their LZW compression patent. In fact, the PNG, or Portable Network Graphic Format, sometimes it's called PING, that was created in response to the GIF patents, the LZW compression patents. PING, or PNG, was a format that would, it didn't have any patents, and it achieved good compression, and as a bonus, beyond what GIF offered, um, PNG can actually encode true color, where GIF stopped at 8-bit. So you had better color potential, and it's lossless, just like GIF. So because it's lossless, you can create an image and not throw away any data and so on. Yeah, anyway, the point is ping exists solely because patent encumbrance meant that if you wanted to write a GIF encoder or decoder, it wasn't just up to you coding the way to implement this compression algorithm. It was also that you technically had to pay for it for the privilege of telling your computer how to do the math to pull the pixels out of the compressed data format. Also, MP3, uh, which is technically uh, MPEG-1 Layer 3 audio, uh, that was also patent encumbered for 20 years, and coincidentally not that far off from the uh, LCW patents. This is just a few things. There, um, a lot of common video formats are patent encumbered. VP8 and VP9 were written in response to H.264 um, AVC video um, and H.265 or HEVC video, both being patent encumbered compression algorithms. As you can see, this song and dance has continued for quite a while. Og Vorbis, that's O-G-G, Og Vorbis, or the, uh, the OGV and OGA or OGG video format or, and audio formats, those media formats came about because MP3 was patent encumbered. Oh, um, what was it? The, even like the container formats were patent encumbered. So like MP4 is, um, technically it's an MPEG, uh, MPEG LA, I think, um, patented. So technically you're supposed to pay, or you, or at least you were, I think, for the MP4 format to be something that you use. Um, in response to this kind of thing, um, and, and to Windows Media Audio and Video, you know, technically those are owned by Microsoft, just all these patent encumbered formats and containers inspired free versions that are similar, but you can kind of see the problem here. These people create algorithms that do things, and then um, the patents hold you back. But the one silver line, and, and, and you get all these freebies that are incompatible that replace them, um, just because you don't have this requirement to pay up for a license. So, the problem is that these patents, they, they choke out um, people using, you know, using standard formats, except the standard costs money, so it's, it's a standard, but only if you pay up, and open source software in particular has a major problem with that, because how do you pay uh, for free software, how do you get someone to pay 40 cents for an MPEG-2 decoder license or something in, in free software decoders that they can download the source code to that are GPL licensed and everything? So it's a big problem in the open source community. Anyway, patents have one silver lining, and that is that they die after 20 years no matter what. So MP3 is no longer patented. The patent expired 
anybody can use the MP3 format. Um, I think MP4 at this point is expired, but I need to check on that. Um, I think the QuickTime Move format also, um, but just you get the idea. There's there's all these things that are patent encumbered that no longer are. But I think H.264 and H.265 video, <coughs> which every phone and computer ever has the ability to encode and or at least decode, um, that's patented. You got to pay for it. But think about this for just a second. Patents don't just cover these compression algorithms. They also cover some of the most expensive things on the planet. Case in point, drug companies and their drug patents. If you have a new drug that you've created, you have to patent your drug. You have to publish a patent for your drug, and then you have the rights to a monopoly over it for up to 20 years. The amount of money spent on drug research makes a lot of Hollywood movie budgets look like a joke. Some of these drugs out there could potentially be billions of dollars in combined research and development investment, and they're perfectly fine and not lobbying to, at all to have extended the patent term maximum of 20 years. So if it's good enough for the drug companies making billion dollar drugs, why is it not good enough for Mickey Mouse? This brings me to the first change that I wanted to see, and I would still love to see it. Reduce copyright term drastically from the death of the author plus 70 or more years to the same terms as patents. If it is good enough for billion dollar drugs, it absolutely should be good enough for books, movies, music, software, all of it. There is no reason that copyright should be longer than 20 years. Absolutely no reason at all. If you create something and you can't make enough money off of it within 20 years, what was the point? Like, you've had plenty of time. It is not our job to lock up all of culture just because you are incompetent at making money out of your product. I mean, if you created something good and you marketed it reasonably well, people will pay for it. But that's not my problem. I should not have to wait until your grandchildren die to have access to the stuff that you originally created. Because part of the problem with art in general is that art isn't just owned by the artist. I'm aware that a lot of artists are going to be really angry with me for saying such a heretical thing, but Art is not just the artist's work. Art is also other people consuming that artist's work. For example, I grew up listening to a whole lot of mostly rock music, a lot of classic rock, a lot of alt rock, um, some heavy metal, um, some electronic dance music, even a little bit of like uh, down, you know, break beat, um, drum and bass, that kind of stuff. I didn't realize that's what it was at the time. I got my hands on a few small things, but I listened to various music whenever I was in uh, middle and high school, and that music became very important to me. I, I listened to a lot of it hundreds of times over. So that music has importance to me. It's part of my personal culture. It influenced my development. It's also something that I still listen to to this day. And it's far beyond just mere sound waves blasting through the air. It's far beyond a composition scrawled down on a piece of paper. It is part of my life as much as it's a part of the life of the person who originally created it, or the people in most cases. The music I listened to in high school, I should be able to do whatever I want with. I don't see why I can't because that's the problem. I bought a copy of the music. It's my music. It's not their music. And I understand that they need to be able to make money from their from what they've done, but at the same time, I need to be able to take my culture and express it. So what we really end up with is a monopoly on culture. And I understand that this is just kind of dangerously poking at the line of socialism here, but it's just the truth. What is culture? You know, it, it's not something tangible. It, it's the way that you view the world. It's the way that other people view the world, the way that other people interact with you. It's not 
just a sequence of sounds coming out of a speaker. There's so much more to it than that. And over time, your work as an artist, ideally, <laughs> becomes integral into other people's lives. Even if it's just a painting that you sell and they hang it on their wall and they look at from time to time and they share with other people, that becomes part of their lives as much as it's a part of yours. Now, I understand you need to make money, but why is it that I'm not allowed to take this thing that I love so much, that I've put a lot of my own time, thought, and emotion into, why am I not allowed to take that and express my thoughts on that using that? And in fact, in the United States, we do have a fair use exception to copyright law, but it routinely gets stomped on and practically doesn't exist. I mean, it does exist, but for all practical purposes, it does not because most of these issues never even make their way to the legal system because the system's too strict. And, and I don't want to get too deep into that. The point is, it's my music. It's not Nirvana's or Foo Fighters or Pearl Jam's or Rob Zombie's um, or really pick any of them. You know, it, it's not DJ Fresh's song. It's not Sub Focus's song. It's my song. Yes, you made it. Yes, you created a, an, an, an artistic product and sold it. Yes, it was distributed in some way to me, but at the end of the day, it's my music. I don't look at my music library and go, look at all of this music that is other people's that I have collected in one place. It's my music. Why is it my music? because there's more to it than just what you did to create it. And the idea behind the public domain is that once somebody has had their opportunity to make some money from their effort, that stuff that they did, it should go back to being mine purely in the eyes of the law and everyone else's. Nobody should be restricted from taking this thing that was created that people appreciate and being able to share it with other people. Nobody should have to hold back except for a limited time. This was the entire original principle of copyright that we have completely gotten away from because of, mm, I almost said something bad, um, because of douchebags like Sonny Bono with that stupid Sonny Bono Copyright Extension Act who's like copyright should be forever minus a day. No, you bastard. Your music is my music. Copyright should end as soon as possible so that I can take that damn Metallica song and use it as the background music for some video I want to make that's a completely different work that nobody's watching in place of the Metallica song. It's not even competing. Why are these things forced to compete against each other? Why is it that I can't sample a piece of music to make another piece of music without potentially having to pay millions of dollars to the person who made the first piece of music even though most of the work is mine and I'm just using them as a little instrument. They're a tiny fraction. It doesn't make any sense. No, I, I don't care how entitled you feel to be able to make money forever from this art that you've created. At the end of the day, you create art to share with other people. If you create art just to make money, frankly, you're probably in the wrong field because that's not a very good reason to create art just to make money. You have to actually care, man. And I get it, people make logos for money, but I assume the people making logos like making logos. They enjoy creatively expressing themselves by creating logos for other people that the other people pay them for and that they then share with everybody. And that's the thing. Art ultimately should be shared with everybody, maximally, as much as humanly possible. So, initially, my thought was that copyright should be trademark or patents. Copyright should be no different. If a billion dollar drug is limited to 20 years of monopoly, why isn't copyright? But I th honestly feel like t 20 years is too long as well. I feel like you should have less time than that to monetize your work. If you create something and you take five years to make money off of it, what, what was the point? And, I'm, and I know some products take five years just to bring to market and another five years to actually get not garbage, 
like, uh, what was it, No Man's Sky? They took forever to fix that game up. But what I'm saying is the first version of No Man's Sky that was released, well, five years later or whatever, um, that first version should just be something everybody can share with impunity without having to hide behind a VPN and a torrent site. They should be able to just hand off copies to each other all day long. And then, you know what? Your newest patch, that can be covered by copyright. But the original version? Mm -mm. And by the way, nobody wants to play the original version anyway because it sucked. Now, I didn't play it personally, but my God, some of the stuff I saw on video, it sucked. Uh, it, it, it got good, but it sucked. And we need to be able to take that, that work that sucked, install it on a computer, take video of it, <clears throat> and use that video to comment on how it sucked. In fact, this happens all the time. Look at Internet Historian. There's a reason I brought up No Man's Sky. The YouTube channel, Internet Historian. Look up the video, The Engoodening of No Man's Sky. And that's literally spelled E-N-Good, E-N-I-N-G. <clears throat> the Engoodening of No Man's Sky is an amazing video for a variety of reasons. But one of the big things that makes it amazing is that most of the video is gameplay. It's gameplay with glitches, with failures. You know, it's video, it's basically just a giant clip collection of clips other people recorded assembled to create a whole new work. It is, by definition, exactly what fair use is supposed to embody. The problem is, fair use doesn't exist in today's world. And I learned a lot from that video. I really enjoyed that video. That video should not be in any way encumbered by the fact that the video game itself was copyrighted at some point. It shouldn't be encumbered by the fact that the footage produced of a video game is somehow copyrighted despite the fact that it's the inputs of the person that determine what the video game does, not the video game itself, not, not the original code. And, and there are so many more issues with it. But this is why I'm leaning more towards the notion that copyright should either be extremely short or not exist. Because let's look at a more practical application, because we've mostly been discussing theory, like, oh, it should be 20 years, or oh, it should be five years. But those numbers do seem a little arbitrary. Let's discuss why it should be zero years. Let's discuss why copyright, perhaps, should be eliminated entirely. Let's think about what copyright exists to do. There is a purpose for it. It is to protect your ability to make money from the work for a limited period of time. Except, today, the way that things work on the internet, it is not possible for you to play whack-a-mole hard enough to stop all of the copyright infringement, whether it's fair use or not, that happens against your product. Anything that gets put out there is basically being reposted in other places immediately. If you create a piece of media that is worthwhile, it is probably going to be, if not reposted in whole all over the place, cut up and reposted in pieces, have commentary, criticism, discussion, all kinds of stuff, be used in other things. Culture moves faster now than it did when copyright law was put in place. Culture moves faster now than it did in the 90s before the internet really started to invade everybody's home. Culture moves so quick that copyright doesn't really work anymore. Um, a lot of people who are going to buy something are going to buy it whether or not copyright law forces them to because they want to support the people who make good things. A lot of people who don't buy something aren't going to buy it anyway, and it's not a lost sale because they either will have it or will not have it at all, or they were just going to find some other way to pirate it. And that's it. Numerous studies have been performed over the past two and a half decades on piracy and its, effect, and its effects on markets. Piracy does not negatively affect sales in any meaningful or significant way. Piracy does, however, generally speaking, positively affect sales. Because if you have a bunch of people who are stealing, as in copying, pirating your software, and liking it and telling other people about it, then those other people might buy it. 
your software gets free marketing by the people who are supposedly stealing it. Isn't that amazing? The people that you are going after, spending so much time and money trying to eliminate, are actually advertising for you, and you're hitting them for it. So the supposed effect of somebody having an unauthorized copy tends to be an increase in sales. That doesn't seem to fit the narrative of, well, you need to have a monopoly on this for a limited time so that you can make, make money from your product. Seems like the money is going to flow in one way or the other. Then there's the issue of theft itself. Copying is not theft. Think about this. If you have a rock and somebody takes the rock, now, you don't have the rock, and they do. You've been deprived of your rock. But if you have a page with a short story on it, and you slap that short story onto a copy machine, which creates an identical copy of that page, now you have not been deprived of your original page with that story on it. You actually have made a duplicate. So both of you get a copy of this same story, both of you can read and enjoy this story and talk about it and so on. The problem with copyright is that it locks up the ability to make that copy and give it to someone. Ostensibly, it locks up the ability to make the copy in the first place. I would argue that based on my reading of copyright law and uh, especially intent, that making copies for personal use especially is um, not covered, but that's just me being an amateur keyboard lawyer. And I'm, I'm sure that jurisprudence doesn't fit with that. However, philosophically, I don't see a problem with making uh, a copy of something for yourself, regardless, if no other reason than a backup. And the whole one backup copy thing's stupid, too. What happens if, you, if your backup copy stored in the same building and the building burns down? You see what I mean. But if you make a copy of something, now both of you have it. Both of you can enjoy it. Both of you can discuss it. This is one of the fundamental reasons that copyright doesn't make sense to me. Because if you have something, some sort of art, and you duplicate it, nobody's been deprived. Nobody, it's not been stolen. Now, maybe you can make maybe make an argument for it being devalued because now if, if it had a value of 100, well, now this copy means that you've diluted the value in the overall market because now there's multiple copies instead of a unique one. But that's frankly going against the entire point of copyright itself which is to promote progress in, um, in the real arts or whatever. Um, it's to promote the progress of the arts. And uh, if you're making unique copies and not, you know, not making them available for anybody else, just so that that copy will be insanely expensive, that's not promoting the progress of the arts. Uh, frankly, I think in a situation where you create a copyrighted work, but you refuse to distribute it, you should lose your copyright very quickly. But, as you can see, it doesn't make a lot of sense to withhold the ability to make copies and give them to other people. Because if the other people are not allowed to consume the content in the first place without having to spend more money on their own copy, which they may or may not be able to do, but it, it, maybe they can't even find it, maybe you're not selling it, who knows? But if they're not able to consume the content in the first place, then they can't have a discussion about it. There's no way for that art to be spread around and shared. You basically end up gatekeeping access to the culture. And in fact, this was a big problem when I was in school. Music was a big deal to a whole lot of us school kids. So one of the problems with music is I didn't have any Pearl Jam CDs. Just as an example, I didn't have any Pearl Jam CDs. I, I got CDs through various means, but I didn't really have any money. I grew up pretty poor, and I didn't have money. I didn't have access to media. Napster was actually the first time that I got any significant amount of access to media outside of having to purchase it for a fairly high price for an adolescent with no job. So I didn't have any Pearl Jam CDs. I don't think I even had any Metallica CDs. So because I didn't have this, I either had to hope and pray that for some reason they would play X, Y, or Z on the radio. They, of course, didn't play all the songs, all kinds of stuff I learned about later. Um, or I had to find somebody else that had one that would let me use it for a while. So you gatekeep the culture behind a paywall. And when I put it that way, it sounds kind of bad, doesn't it? 
Look, I'm not against artists making money. What I am against is artists gatekeeping the ability for other people to actually see their art. <laughs> and these things are conflicting, and I understand that there's no good, easy, simple answer. But I've really started to lean towards eliminate copyright entirely because of this fact. Culture moves so fast that a DMCA takedown, and keep in mind the DMCA takedown process was invented in 1998. And it, it, the internet was completely different back then. It was pretty much in its infancy as far as the modern internet goes. And a takedown, they have a month, a month for to respond. Like if you get a DMCA takedown, even if you respond immediately, um, they have a month to actually do something with that. They don't have to immediately do this, that, or the other. If there's a takedown issued, even if you immediately go, hey, wait a minute, here's my counter notification, it's still gone. And I may be getting some of the particulars wrong. Maybe it's a week. I can't remember. But it, it's just late. I'm sorry. But my point is that a DMCA takedown in today's internet culture, today's TikTok, Twitter, short form format, low attention span, moves very fast, modern internet culture. Everything moves so fast that one DMCA takedown notice, even if it's false, takes down the material long enough to completely take the wind out of the sails for whatever was going to publish whatever. Um, so they can't do anything with it. They, they don't get any momentum at all. So if you're a news website and you're competing with another news website, this is actually a, a fairly common tactic. Um, some huge event happens and there's another site covering the same thing as you. You send a DMCA takedown to have the article or whatever shut down. They're forced to immediately, to, in order to retain their DMCA safe harbor, the service provider is forced to take you down, take down that page for a, a minimum amount of time, I can't remember, a week, a month, whatever, um, and you can send a counter notification, but by the time your counter notification actually gets processed and you actually get your page back, the market's gone for the page. Like, it's, it's all already gone. You're not ever going to get that money back. Like, you, you're just not. You're not going to get momentum from that headline because it was a very situational event. So a DMCA can be used to effectively kill your competition, even if it's false. Copyright law is rife with abuses. And I understand sometimes you do need to file a legitimate takedown for legitimate infringement. But more often than not, copyright takedown procedures are used to eliminate competitors, um, including people who say things about content using pieces of that content. Um, this, this has been repeated countless times on YouTube. Commentators can't discuss things while showing the same things so that they can be fair in the discussion um, and, and balanced and, and give full disclosure because that full disclosure can cause them to get shut down for copyright infringement even though it's not infringement. And the video will get published. It'll get nuked. It'll go back up. But by the time it goes back up, the event's over. The, the momentum's gone. The video never realistically sees the light of day. All that hard work's flushed down the toilet. That doesn't sound like promoting the, the progress of the useful arts or whatever to me. That sounds pretty counterintuitive, really. If, if your goal is to enrich the arts, to, to make the arts progress better, then I don't see how shutting people down, uh, allowing other people to shut other people down that, that compete with them, is somehow a good thing. It's not. It's universally not. And there's no way to argue against that. For all these reasons, why is copyright even still a thing? I just don't get it. I mean, I understand. I make stuff myself. I'm making these videos. I don't particularly like it whenever I make a video and then all of a sudden there's 20 copies of it on BitChute because for some reason people just grab and repost and don't even look to see that I've already posted it there. Yeah, I find that to be pretty annoying. I don't like it when you repost my videos verbatim on another platform without saying anything to me first. I think it's really rude. At the same time, I have not issued a single takedown over on BitChute or wherever 
for people who have reposted my same content, even though there's quite a few of them for the Windows 11 video, because I'm not going to be that way. I don't think that it's worth it. First of all, you know what? Someone posted my video over there first and they got a bunch of views. Okay, whatever. You know, that, that really is my bad for not posting it there in the first place um, or not posting it there fast enough. You know, that's my fault. Uh, what, what good's it going to do now? You know, the, the, the event's gone. I mean, what am I going to do? Am I going to get more views by eliminating theirs? Oh, I might get like five more views on that video. You know, wow, okay. It, it's just not worth it. And I mean, if someone beat me to the punch with my own work, um, at least in that regard, yeah, it was my fault. <laughs> um, at the same time, it is ridiculous if I have, say, a computer repair tutorial on YouTube and someone copied it, that this actually happened. I did issue a takedown for that because they just copied the video verbatim. They, and it was, they had an opportunity to translate it or something like that. But no, I checked, they didn't even translate it. They didn't even like put captions or, or, or like overdub the audio or anything. They literally just copied the stupid video and it's a computer repair tutorial. Well, we don't need two copies of my computer repair tutorial on YouTube. What do you think, I'm gonna go away? No, there's really no need to have two copies of it. And I didn't see any reason. I tried to be charitable, but it was ridiculous. So yes, I have actually used one time the uh, copyright takedown, the um, seven day one on YouTube to get someone to take down an identical copy of my video that they reposted without saying anything to me and without adding any value whatsoever to it. Because I and, and that was really just because I thought it was stupid that they did it. Um, it didn't make any sense to me. Like, what, were you, you think you're going to get views? He got like 20 views. Honestly, I, I kind of feel bad for even doing it because in a way I feel like I compromised my principles a bit by doing that. Because um, honestly, what's, a, what's he going to do? He's not like eliminating the market for my video. Who's he hurting? So maybe I shouldn't have done that. And yeah, in retrospect, I feel like I wouldn't do it again if it happened again. I, I At this point, I don't give a crap if somebody re-uploads all my stupid videos. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of out of time. And I'm, I'm out of throat as well. So there's a bunch of arguments for why copyright shouldn't exist. Patents, um, I don't know that patents should exist either. Honestly, I feel like we are to the point where these old school intellectual property laws, all they really do is prevent anything from progressing. Um, withholding information is withholding progress. And I think that that is a big problem in today's society. So I don't advocate for this. I don't think that we should be withholding information and thus societal progress. So yeah, I think intellectual property laws are a dinosaur concept that need to die. And that's it. And I hope this is as based as I feel like it is in this moment. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that crap. Take it easy. There's no way for that art to be spread around and shared. There's no way for that art to go anywhere. You, you can turn your headlights off, bud. Like